42 may be the meaning of life, but Title 42 is coming to an end. This Trump-era policy allows authorities to deport migrants at the border at a moment's notice, using the COVID-19 pandemic as rationale, but was expanded during the Biden administration. But as the US public health emergency ends on the 11th of May, Title 42 will cease alongside it. Since its inception in 2020, around 2.7 million migrants have been deported at the US southern border. But with Title 42 out of the equation, the US is expecting a new influx of illegal border crossings. In order to stop this, numerous policies are being drawn up, including denying asylum to those who are passing through multiple countries to reach the US, as well as an increase in staff at migrant centers to help with processing. But will any of this make a difference? And what is the best way to deal with the migrant crisis? Is the US too harsh on migrants or not harsh enough? Attempts to end Title 42 have been unsuccessful in the past. Is now the right time for it to end or should Title 42 be extended? So let's get to it. Uh, should uh, Title 42 be extended? As always, gentlemen, we begin with our quick fire round, 30 seconds each to let your initial stance on the matter, and we pick up the conversation uh, from there. So Orlando uh, Sanchez, please take the lead. Your 30 seconds are on. Well, we have about 10,000 illegal encounters per day along the Texas border. Title 42 was part of an emergency measure due to COVID-19. So it will expire. But yes, a similar policy should be enacted because we have more than 2.5 million encounters at our Texas border. Trimble Gomes, your thoughts. Title 42 was a solution used to temporarily expel individuals who pose, who may have posed a risk of spreading COVID-19 during the height of the pandemic. Like we saw around the world, many countries closed their borders to limit its spreads. We're no longer dealing with this global pandemic. The public health emergency here in the United States will be lifted. So rightly so, it should be back to business. And that means processing these folks who are coming into the country, asylum seekers, the, the way it used to be. Uh, and that's what's going forward. The pandemic is over, so it's back to business as usual. Mark Schulman, last but not least. Well, 42 had to end because legally it has to end. But yeah. the question is back to back to regular, back to usual. No, that's not a good solution either because it hasn't been taken care of well over a period of time. What needs to be done is an emergency situation, create, bring 100, 500, as many judges as possible, process people within a week, and then either expel them or accept them into the United States based on their uh, based on their criteria to be received as refugees or not. This has to be done immediately, quickly. It's an emergency in the sense of bringing literally hundreds of judges. Yeah. Okay, gentlemen, let's uh, please feel free to interact from this point onwards. And, and Mr. Sanchez, I do want to begin with you. Is the problem illegal migration or migration full stop? Well, uh, define it as you wish, but it is illegal to cross the U.S. border without being inspected. And as you know, and has been reported here just a second ago, there are 2.5 to 2.7 million crossings per year. That's not acceptable. We need to know who's in this country. So we do need a process. I'm an immigrant to this country. I came here in 1962, but we have to follow a process, a legal process. We're a welcoming country, but the cartels, the criminal cartels in Central America and Mexico have taken over this business and risking the lives of even the immigrants and our border patrol. Mr. Schulman. I mean, the solution is simple in my mind. Number two, increase the number of legal immigrants, increase the quotas from those countries that people want to come in Central and South America, increase what we've been doing about a million a year, make it two million a year in terms of legal immigrants, process them, process them in their own countries. They won't have to make their way to the Mexican border, give them immigrant status based on their uh, security risks and everything else. And in the meantime, like I said, create an emergency situation where everybody who crosses and demands asylum or asks for asylum and based on international law, gets processed within 10 days, either gets accepted or gets sent back. 
but do it quickly, and so you don't have this situation where you have, you know, millions of people just in limbo for years and years and years. And, and, and Trimble Gomes, um, uh, speaking of um, of uh, of asylum uh, seekers and the processing of that, yes to Ukrainian refugees, no to Central American ones. Qu question being, is there a racial double standard uh, when it comes to um, um, to illegal migration or, or to asylum seekers? In this climate, it, you, you have to say yes. You can't ignore what we've been seeing over time. And looking back to the last administration where the former president, President Trump, was very blunt on his preference to different countries and, and the racial makeup of it. But to what happens at the end of Title 42, yeah. it basically ends this emergency, uh, this immediate kicking out of anyone who's coming to the border. What goes back in place is actually sitting down, interviewing uh, these individuals, seeing what type of status they're looking for, what they're seeking. If they say they are seeking asylum, then they get processed that way. Um, there is a communication problems with the United States with at least letting people on the other side know what's the legal process and what's the other processes and ways to get into the country. So that needs to be addressed through comprehensive immigration reform. Mr. Sanchez, uh, um, perhaps uh, I wouldn't say the problem is rooted in that, but another problematic element is absorption, as in what happens to migrants who are not expelled. Well, as you say, they're absorbed into the community, and Texas bears the brunt. Here in Texas, we have the largest volume of illegal aliens crossing, and the burden falls on the property taxpayers of the state of Texas. And uh, so this has got to come to an end. Uh, this is why there's a political shift in South Texas where you see traditional Democrats now voting for Republicans because the Democrats in South Texas believe Republicans are better at protecting the border. Uh, but, you know, everybody, and I agree, we need to increase the number of legal visas. We need to expedite the number of hearings. We all know what the solution is, but no one's willing to do it. Not Republican, not Democrat. We've had Biden, we've had Bush, we've had Trump, we've had Obama. No one wants to do it. Why? This country, the United States, is dependent on cheap labor, and we've turned the enterprise over to criminal elements in Central America and Mexico, known as drug cartels. Mr. Look, the, reality, the reality is immigration is very important to the United States. The only reason the United States is not decreasing, is. decreasing in population is because of immigration. Immigrants both bring more numbers, and immigrants have more children in the first generation of immigrants than anyone else in the United States does. And so the U.S. is one of the few growing countries in the OECD. So immigration is really very, very important to the United States. Getting control couldn't, over this issue— agree more. Getting control of this issue is a real political, uh, it's been impossible because both parties have used it as a political sledgehammer. The Republicans love crying, immigrants, 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 but they won't give the money to solve the problem. The Democrats give, we have to help the immigrants, but they don't have any solutions to the problem. And I think the solutions need to become, look, some of it is the Congress, the Congress won't make a decision, but I think some of it, the administration needs to take a little bit of responsibility and come up with an emergency plan and implement that plan as best as it can, push the limits of the laws as much as they can. The goal the goal being to get as many legal immigrants in as possible, the goal being to process immigrants as rapidly as possible, people who are seeking asylum. Remember, we have to accept asylum seekers in the United States based on international law. That was created after World War II when no one would accept Jews who were running away from the Nazis. Now, I want to go back to your question, Ukraine versus, no versus Central America. Remember, Ukraine refugees are running from a war. They're running from Russians who are killing them. The question in South and Central America is more complicated. Are they economic refugees? Are they running away from cartels? Are they running away from repressive regimes? It's much more complicated. It's not as easy as someone running away from war and running away from the Russians. And to that point, too, um, the, the problem here, and it may be the racial component, is that those coming from the southern border are, are painted as uh, as dangerous, as risky. Um, and this is a message that comes across uh, mostly from Republicans. There's this fear of, like, you know, increased crime and so on that will happen to um, the communities here in the U.S. And that 
problem, that painting, that picture is why we're seeing as if, like, you know, there's like this border crisis, just couching it in, in that vein. Whereas if you put it as a way of like a solution, um, circular migration, where like, you know, when it comes to agriculture and different industries yeah. that could benefit from migration, that's where comprehensive immigration solutions can, can come about. People going but to the, Congress and sitting around and coming up with proper solutions. There's always been opposition to immigration in the United States. We can go all the way back to the 1800s, the do nothing party who opposed immigration. It started with the immigration of the Irish Catholics and went through the, throughout history. There was there's this problem that Americans didn't want someone else. Whoever was there before thought they were the best, and we don't want any new immigrants to come, changing the composition. At one point, religious composition, ethnic composition. These are all problems that the United States has had for generations. On the other hand, everyone mm -hmm. accepts the fact that the United States is the built on immigration. What's the solution now? What's what can be done today instead of looking backwards? Like, how do we move this conversation forward to, to help us all so we don't have this discussion next week? Well, I, again, I think administrative action of bringing, like I said, a thousand judges to the border, processing these people as quickly as possible is something that could be done. Raising the quotas, I think Congress has to raise the quotas. I'm not 100% sure about that. But these are things that can be done. Speeding up the visa process is something administratively could be done. So these are things that need to be done. It has to be a high enough priority. But there's so many priorities, and, you know, government just doesn't work as fast as it should many times. Yeah, and Congress essentially MIA, uh, so to speak. Uh, um, well, Mr. Sanchez? I, I, I would, yeah. yeah, I would disagree with that. We've had a president now almost three years in office, has totally ignored the southern border. Order, finally sent the Department of Homeland Security secretary to Texas a couple of days ago. And for those that don't believe there's a consequence to not screening immigrants and that some criminal elements come in, let me remind you that a few miles from me, a few days ago, uh, five Salvadorans were killed by a four-time illegal immigrant, walked into their house, and shot the entire family to death. The entire world saw that. There are yeah, there, 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 there are plenty of other there, there are plenty of other Texans who were killed in the last week, not who weren't by immigrants. So please, that's really ridiculous that's right. to use that as a story. But the, state, but, but the statement was that immigrants are coming in and they're not criminals. Yes, there's a large criminal element that does come and in. And there's a large criminal America in America too. I mean, a lot of people have been killed recently in Texas by guns. Well, so we'll let's deal, not go we'll, that way. We deal. That's right. And we deal with them with the judicial system. But the fact of the matter is we don't have to suffer the consequences of illegal criminal aliens coming in. Our government needs to screen them. We do need immigration in this country. I'm an asylum seeker, came here in 1962. We need immigration. There's no question. But we need a process that works. Yeah, Trimel Gomes. That is an example yeah. of the problem here. Where we're seeing him using that in that single case as an example, painting all folks who are trying to come to this country when day in and day out here in the United States, we're seeing mass shootings over and over again. Um, and we're not getting that same, oh, let's kick <laughs> the citizens out of this country, but we're gonna do so for an incident. Crime happens, but yeah. to paint one individual um, and one case okay. like that and say like those who are coming here for safety okay. shouldn't be here. Well, is if, just, if we, if, if yeah. we had Gentlemen, time, we do need to take a very short break now, but we'll continue uh, right from this point uh, after the break. Don't go anywhere. We're back in a bit. Welcome back to the summit. Still uh, with us, Orlando Sanchez, Trimble Gomes, and Mark Schulman. Thank you, gentlemen, so very much uh, for staying with us. We're also staying on topic, of course. But before we get back to our conversation, uh, way back when uh, U.S. President uh, Joe Biden placed the immigration issue high on his agenda. But what happened since? This is what he uh, had to say back in 2021. Well, look, I guess I should be flattered. People are coming because I'm the nice guy. That's the reason why it's happening. That I'm a decent man or however it's phrased. That, you know, that's why they're coming, because no, Biden's a good guy. Truth of the matter is, nothing has changed. As many people came, 28% increase in children to the border in my administration, 31% in the last year of in 2019 before the pandemic in the Trump administration. It happens every single solitary year. There is a significant increase in the number of people coming to the border. Let's get to it, gentlemen. Simply put, has Joe Biden failed on uh, migration? Another quick fire round, and we take it from there to Mel Gomes. Take the lead, please. 
Well, there's no difficult and, and, and well, no easy solution around this. Whether he has failed, that's um, um, it's 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 a stretch. It's been a complicated situation. Uh, he has been trying President Biden to work on this migration issue, and there's, like I said before, a communication problem ahead. We're seeing this large influx of people coming to the borders. Um, instead, people, the U.S. should arm people to go out there at the border and give information how to get yeah. to the U.S. legally and safely. Mark Schulman. Look, I mean, nothing changed. He's correct. I mean, because of the Title 42 being in effect, the reality is, yes, 2.5 million or 2.1 million migrants have come and 2.5 million have been sent back across the border. Um, the overwhelming majority have been sent back, so nothing has really changed. You can't say Biden has failed. Biden has failed to solve the problem, but so did Trump, so did Bush, so did Obama, et cetera, et cetera. Every president in, since Reagan has failed to deal with the problem in any serious way or solve the problem in any serious way. I don't think he could have done more. Right now, I hope he's prepared for what's going to happen next week. I don't know if he has. Orlando Sanchez? The last president that attempted to do something was Ronald Reagan in 1986 when he granted amnesty and assured the country that the border would be secure and that the rules would be followed. It hasn't happened. When we try to share the love, here in Texas, we absorb the largest number of illegal aliens in this country. We send them to Martha's Vineyard. We send them to New York. We send them to Chicago. Nobody wants them. Martha's Vineyard eliminated them in 72 hours. So here in Texas, we bear the brunt of supporting, with our tax dollars, illegal immigration. There are more illegal immigrants in the in New York area than there are in Texas. I mean, yes, they come first to Texas, but no one wants to stay in Texas if they don't have to. I mean, who would want to live in Texas? No, I'm just kidding. But the reality <laughs> is that the, that uh, most immigrants well, go to the main... Well, obviously, people go, are fleeing New York coming to Texas and Florida. That's a different group of people, but we'll talk about that separately. Oh, it's I a see. Tax yeah, issue. Tax taxes, 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 yeah, taxes. Tax people want, don't yeah, pay right. taxes. Well, but there's the your answer. They want to come to Texas. <laughs> But, 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 the, the, the migrants want to come where there's work. They want to work, whether they're working legally or illegal, they want to work. They don't want to be a burden on anybody. It's a big problem, don't get me wrong, and we have to know who's coming in. But most of them are not staying in Texas. They're moving on. They're moving on to their families in different cities. They go mostly to the major cities in the United States, and that's where they settle, as has been the history and of immigration yet. throughout America. And why are the mayors of these cities squealing like we can't take any more? Come on, please. Yeah, they can't take any more in a short period of time. They're being, you know, but the reality oh, is they I are see. taking more. Well, we're, we're, we're it's only it's a, sending them once every few months. Yeah, that's not really quite true. This harsh the reality policy, is, well, it is. It's it's yeah. Right, so at the height of the pandemic is coming to an end. So on the other side of the border, people are thinking like, oh, wow, it's like it's free time. We can actually go to the United States. Again, I'm stressing it's a messaging problem. This is why um, Border Patrol officers need to be there to provide information, really good information about how to come to the U.S. legally. Um, the, message, the messaging has to be done in their home. <laughs> The messaging has to be done in their home countries. By the time they're at the border area, it's too late, quite honestly. They can't apply legally at, at the border area to the American embassy or consulate uh, from the border area. The messaging has to be spread in South America, in Central America, in the home countries. A significant amount of money has to be spent on messaging. And a significant amount of time and effort has to be spent on processing legal immigrants from those countries. There's nothing wrong with immigrants from all of these countries. The United States needs as many immigrants as it could possibly uh, settle in one particular year. Remember, we settled in the beginning of the 19th century, 20th century, excuse me, over a million uh, refugees or re a million immigrants a year. The country was one third the size in terms of population. Today, we can clearly take two to three million a year. Yeah. It just requires the proper planning and the proper will to do so. If we were to take two to three million legal immigrants a year, this problem would go away. Well, uh, reality on the ground will inevitably change very soon. But when we're talking policy, gentlemen, is anything going to change until 2024? Or is it, you know, just buying time until then, uh, um, Trimble Gomes? 
Um, what goes back into place um, after Title 42 is lifted is, is, is Title 8, which is the, like I said earlier, yeah. it's, it's, it's the business as usual, which some are unhappy with. And it still needs to be fixed. That is where when someone comes to the, the border and they want to come in, they get to plead their case to a border officer. They either say they want um, asylum um, status and then they get treated that way. Um, it's going to be an, a large influx and whether the U.S. can handle that, that's the problem ahead. That's where the but, solutions need to but come. The big, How but do we the big, deal with the problem right in front of us? But the big problem is the case isn't adjudicated on the spot or within a couple of days. They get a court case for six months, a year later, and that's absurd. They need to have a court case three days later, five days later. They need to be a place to put them until their court well, case, and then they need to have a court Mark, case. Mark, that's not going to happen. As you know, this country depends on illegal immigration for cheap labor. And until we get serious about controlling the border, I mean, we could issue 2.5 million visas tomorrow if the United States wanted to, but they would become legal, the wages would go up. So this country relies on cheap labor. We've turned the importation of cheap labor to the drug cartels and the criminal elements in Latin America and Mexico, and that's what well, we the, see happening. Then, 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 then the solution is to, to crack down on companies that hire and that hire these people and don't pay them yep. their full wages. And do that. I, Anybody, well, you know, I'm, millions of, I, millions of said, dollars in fines. Mark, Mark uh, exactly right. Let me just tell you, I'm a property taxpayer in three counties in Texas. I can tell you that if I accidentally invite a man to come work on my house in South Texas, my car is confiscated, I'm fined a quarter of a million dollars, I go to prison. But companies can hire illegal aliens. The minute the CEOs and the board of directors do the perp walk in the federal courtrooms, Illegal immigration will stop if so, we're serious. Okay. So, so, I, I agree with that 100. percent No well, one should no no one should be hired illegally. They should be I and agree. all these people should become legal. I mean, I believe these people should become legal if we can find a way to do it. But there should be no one illegal because illegal means you don't have control. They don't have taxes being paid properly. You don't have all the things you need of a legal citizen, and that has to stop. And uh, Precisely. you have to just find the way to get, make two three million people a year legal immigrants. Well, you gentlemen uh, yeah. agree, and yet uh, um, migrants uh, are, are stuck on one side of the border in this limbo, and it appears that U.S. migration policy is stuck in a political limbo as well. Any way out of it, uh, uh, Tremel? Well, right now, it, it, it's it's really going to be stuck. Like here in Florida, um, you have like hard right Republicans who are not interested in like, you know, these common sense solutions and finding areas of agreement. Um, it's they, they want Title 42 to, to be in place to say absolutely no to anyone coming in, even though that was a emergency measure. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are in this climate. Um, when you look around the, the country and uh, mostly Republican led states, they're looking for that hard line of like you know cutting mm -hmm. off immigration despite the benefits of having a um, um, good immigrants coming comprehensive immigration policy to to process people in and out um, uh, of the country mr Sanchez well, politics, yeah. politics yeah. is frozen in the United well, you States know you always point. blame it on the Republicans this is not a partisan issue I agree with mark mark laid it out earlier both Republicans and Democrats are at fault the problem is that we have an insatiable appetite for yeah. illegal immigration, which creates cheap labor in this country. And let me tell you what the Democrats yeah. are doing. If we want to play a partisan game, I, we're creating a permanent underclass. The Biden administration is creating a permanent underclass. Unfortunately, Mr. Hispanic. Sanchez, we have to end our discussion here.